Welcome back. It is still Afro Sport now in focus. The Premier League and most of Europe's uh, big leagues are on a break for the international weekend. And uh, in the Premier League, it's saw so Liverpool who have now taken control of the Premier League table. Let's quickly just wrap up all of the results from the weekend in England. And it's seen uh, Liverpool have taken control. They defeated Aston Villa by two goals to nothing. Brighton defeated Manchester City, who lost their fourth game on the bounce. Uh, Fulham defeated uh, Crystal Palace 2-0 away from home. Brentford came back from behind to beat Bournemouth 3-2. West Ham and Everton drew 0-0. And Wolverhampton Wanderers defeated Southampton by two goals uh, to nothing. On Saturday in the Premier League, Manchester United defeated Leicester 3-0. Nottingham Forest also, um, um, their recent winning run came to a close. They lost to Newcastle United 3-1. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur beaten at home. Ipswich Town picking up the first win of the season in that one. And the game of the weekend... Uh, so Chelsea and Arsenal uh, draw 1-1. One, one. In the aftermath of the Chelsea and Arsenal game, the Arsenal manager, Mikel Arteta, was uh, coy on his team's uh, chances of picking up the Premier League after dropping so many points, while the Chelsea manager, Andrew, uh, Enzo Maresca, was uh, pretty delighted with his team's performance against one of the top teams. Very soon we're going to win this kind of a game, but for sure in this moment the performance... Is, is very important because if you draw tonight and you don't deserve the draw, probably you are happy about the result, but uh, the performance is not good. I said many times, for me, Bournemouth away, we didn't deserve to win, and we win. And probably at home with the Palace or Forest, we deserve to win and we didn't win. So it's game by game, for sure, this kind of game, soon we're going we're gonna to win, but uh, the performance has been very good. They just asked me where I see the club in May, April, at the end of the season, and I said that... Uh, I'm not worried where we can be at the end of the season. I'm more worried, to be honest, now I'm relaxed because we have international break. But when we work every day, I'm more worried how we can improve the players and we can improve the, the team. And this is the, the main focus since, since we start. Well, disappointed uh, with the results because I think uh, we deserve more. Uh, and at the same time, very proud about the team. The way we played here against this opponent in this stadium, they have battered every opponent here. And obviously, it wasn't the case today. What I'm just praying is that after international break, I have the team fully equipped physically, that they are available and they are fit, because it's been an absolute nightmare for eight weeks. Uh, patch after that, issue after issue, not only the ones that are not able to play, but the ones that are able to play only for certain moments, only for certain days, not able to train. So I'm just asking that because the team, the desire that they have and, and how much we want it is, it's just no question about that. So it's going to come. We just need that on our side. So that re result, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal currently sec uh, third and fourth, respectively. Liverpool five points uh, clear uh, at the top. I've got uh, uh, in-house uh, analysts here at Afrosport. If you can listen, I've got joining me. Um, in terms of, great to have you, by the way, yeah, Ibi Kule. Um, in terms of the, the dynamics of both teams, Arsenal obviously expected to challenge for the title. Chelsea, maybe not so, but a couple of people had them down to maybe make a push uh, for Champions League football. What did you make of where both teams are at the moment? Well, I think a bit disappointing for Arsenal, but great for Chelsea. Because you look at what Enzo Maresca has done this season, I, a lot of people say, oh, they bought so many players. But the truth is, in a match day squad, the first 11 that Ezra Maeska has, you know, fielded most of the times, only two or three guys were not there last year. So these same guys, these same 9, 10, 11, 14, whatever number it is, they are the ones playing this brilliant football that we are watching them play this season. We see how they are blowing teams away in the Europa League. We see how they've held their own against top oppositions in the Premier League, obviously drew against... Um, Arsenal in the, in the Premier League on Sunday, even in the, ga the game against Liverpool where they lost two on Anfield, I think they did enough to. Uh, at Things least, are going um, well for Chelsea. Yeah, I think they did enough to, uh, to, uh, to have gotten a draw. So they've, they've, they've been doing really well. They've been flying under the radar though, but in the Premier League, you can't always fly under the radar because the table, the table speaks for itself. They are third now. I think this is the first time they'll be third since the final day of the 2021-22 season. So going in the right direction. But for Arteta and Arsenal on the well, other hand... Well, 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 let's hold up with Chelsea, though. Um, you talked about the strength and the, the squad depth that yeah. they have. And he's somehow managed to keep a settled side for the last few weeks. How long into the season before some of these players were not playing at the moment? For instance, the most expensive player, Enzo Fernandez, who is the club captain, is on the bench. He hasn't played. Joao Felix also hasn't gotten game time. 
Um, Nkunku also hasn't played that much. How does he... It's still easy now because you yeah. feel like you can still fight your yeah. way in. But when it gets to the point where the team is very settled, how long before he starts to have a problem uh -huh. managing the guys who are not getting game time? Well, I think he's done a great job. I think from the beginning of the season, he laid down a marker. I, I, I listened or watched some of his presses in the beginning of the season, and he made it known that the club might have 40-something players, but he has just 25. So out of these 25, he said, based on his word, he tries to pick them based on how well they did in the training. So it's a case of, are you doing well in training? If you do well, then you get you get a shot at it. You, for example, you look at um, Jadon Sancho when he came on loan for Man United. The first few games played well, dazzled well, got a couple of assists. I think the turning point for him was the game at West Ham, then the game at Liverpool where he didn't do well, where he got you know substituted at halftime. Ever since then, Neto, you know, provided ne Neto used to come off the bench. He provided Neto with the opportunity. Neto came in, made that position on his own on the left. Then there's Madueke on the right, who is doing well too. I think maybe if one of, one of them, maybe Neto recedes or maybe Madukes form drops, there's somebody there. So I think, like you said, strength in numbers. I, I understand that these players are big players. I understand like the Enzo's of this world, the Nkuku of this world. They're coming from places where they're like the first names on the, on, on the team sheet. But you also have to understand that when you are in a team that has so much talent and so much young talent, people that obviously want to develop too, you give your manager the time, you trust the process. And with a manager like Enzo that seems like he's disciplined, you hear this comment about uh, Rich James not being a leader or not being much of a leader for him. So you look at things like that, he's, he sort of like set, set the marker early in the season, made them understand that, oh, you might be the big boys in the squad, but I'm the owner of this team, I'm the manager of this team. So he's laid down that marker. Those guys who rightly complain, Jaflex is a big name player, Nkuku is a big name player, um, Enzo Fernandez should be starting for Chelsea, I think, because of the money that he bought him for. But I do not think they will, they, they will have that much reason to complain now because the team is winning. And mm. as, as sports, sportsmen and women, it should be team first rather than individual um, mm. goals first. For Arsenal, though, um, a lot has been said about uh, how they've maybe regressed a bit. There's the school of thought that is they have played some really difficult games already. They've yeah. played Villa away, they've played Bournemouth away, they've played City away, they've played Tottenham away already. Um, and they have done it with missing some very key players. They've had spells where they didn't have um, uh, Martin, the, Odegaard. Martin Odegaard fit. Bukayo Saka also has picked up Calafuri his fair share too, yeah. of injuries. Um, in that respect, would you say that they've done decent? Uh, all due respect, no. Um, I think for a side that has now given people a taste of the sort of football they can play over the last two, three seasons, it is rightfully so that people expect more from them. But um, there's, 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 the, there's the angle of the injuries. But as, uh, as, as, as a neutral fan watching us now play football, you don't see them at the level that they were just It's a still early months. days, though. Yeah, it's still early days, but you just don't see them at the level they were a couple months ago. You know, you watch some of their games, and I, I think Ateta is trying so much to... to he's, he's been a bit more pragmatic than he should be. And you see, that's what happens when you, you've thrown everything you have at it. And you still <laughs> when you have a Guardiola managing another side in your in, 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 in the but Premier But notoriously, you, you probably look back and think that City always are predominantly very slow starters. Some True. of the big teams across True. Europe True. don't particularly start well. M maybe the Gunners are maybe keeping themselves fresh for maybe later on when it does matter. Although nine points is a fair it's a lot. So there's, there's that school of thought. Maybe and they have played well. some difficult games already. True, but you also understand that, like you said, City, this is a side that can win 16, 20, 21 games in a row. They've done it. There was a season where they won 21 Premier Leagues in a row. They won 16 Premier Leagues in, um, games in a row. So because of, who, because of who you are trying to go into battle against, you have to have the understanding of you need to pick up your points really early. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one thing that helped Arsenal last season. While City were fumbling, they were winning. But although it got to the point of the season where we all know what De Bruyne and City brings to the table, and they just kept you know, firing on all cylinders. But with Arsenal, you cannot afford to slip up. And let's not forget that last season, two seasons ago, it was just a two-man horse race. Arsenal and Manchester City. Now there's Liverpool in the frame. And you look at the football that they are playing with blistering pace. Mm. All Anna Slaughter did was keep um, Ogin Klopp's attack and just put a bit of fluidity from... You know, from from the defense. Is it to early the though? To, to Liverpool, people will tell you Liverpool haven't really played uh, any serious teams, and it's just eleven games. You've still got about twenty-seven games to play in the yeah. Premier League. Well, it's the early days, like you said, but these guys have played. Maybe my United are not at, at their greatest form at the moment. Obviously, they played my United away. They've played Arsenal away, and they've not lost those games. I think the only person they lost in the Premier League 
was not in Forest, who obviously, mm. by their own standards, are doing great this season. So, mm. early days, but it is important that they are racking up these points very early because one injury can change everything this season. All right, Tom, the team everyone's afraid of is Manchester City, even though they're five points behind the current leaders. After they dropped their fourth game uh, over the weekend, their manager, Pep Guardiola, says uh, that uh, his team will learn from their latest setback. I was a football player and many times I lost a lot of games, four in a row, five in a row, six in a row. I never expect different for the fact we have won in the past that uh, we are special. Or people can believe it that, but it's not true. You can lose four games in different competitions. You can lose it. We are not consistent enough to maintain this level that help us to win what we won for many years. Hopefully in the future we can come back. And if you don't come back, we'll learn from that. If we are not able to win, we'll work to come back. But that is what it's about. You know, don't be a lot of competency when you want a lot and knowing how difficult it is. That makes us believe how difficult it was and how nice it will be when we win again. All right, um, uh, Manchester City manager there, Pep Guardiola. What has gone wrong with City? Is it still, despite the fact that they've lost four in a row, four in all competitions, not in the Premier League, there's still this general feeling that they are still contenders. <laughs> they probably still will win the Premier League. Yeah, they've got Ellen Ireland. They've got Kevin De Bruyne, Ederson, Kaiwoka. These are these are the guys that have won the last four Premier League titles. These are but they're not going to win forever, are they? Obviously, they wouldn't. But like, it, I think it just comes as a shock that not only are they losing, they're not playing great football. I think that's the shocker for me because, you know, City once or twice here and there, they tend to drop games as the season goes by. But this season, you look at some of the games they've played in Premier League, I think about for like four straight games, they had to secure a comeback victory. W you know, went behind early with doggedness and that experience and that belief. But that seems to happen to all the top guys. Even though Liverpool are in control, they, they've not particularly blown teams away. It, 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 are we maybe underrating the fact that maybe some of the Premier League teams have gotten better this year? Yeah, I think you have that point. Because you look at what Bournemouth are doing, you look at what Nottingham Forest are doing, Look at Premier League teams. Look at look at how much Brighton spent in the in, in the transfer in the last summer, the window. Look at the quality of players that they brought in. Uh, Matt O'Reilly had about thirty something goal, um, 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 an assist with Celtic last season. You look at Joao Pedro. You know, being very confident playing this season. Danny Welbeck hasn't you know dropped a bit for that Brighton side. You look at Chris Wood, who nobody expected to be this good with Nottingham Forest. You have a point right there that these teams have stepped it up a notch. But again, you look at. It's Guardiola, it's Manchester City. People expect them to win these games. People expect them to play great football. You look at their game against Sporting in the Champions League. It felt like after the first half, Wizzle went, maybe the second half started, it felt like they were tired. You look at their game against Brighton. They were not getting answers to some of the questions that Brighton mm -hmm. you know, asked of them. They were too sloppy in passing, too sloppy mm -hmm. in the defence. Look at the two goals that they considered. You know? So I think that is what is making people a bit more worried that this is not... City. You know, sometimes City will play you and they will lose one new, they will lose two one. Mm. But now they're not even playing that f good football that we know that they play. Many people might say maybe it's because of Rodri and his ability to, you know, mm. put everybody together. But it's not just that. This is a team right. that is way beyond one player. So I think they need to just come back, go back to drawing board. It's, it's great that the international window is coming now. They have got about 10 to 11 days to go back. Go back to drawing board. Look at where their lapses are. And Honestly, injuries have also not helped them this season. There's Doku being injured, there's British injured. All of mm -hmm. these guys are injured. So uh, I think if anybody can turn it around, Guardiola can turn it around. So Liverpool on pole to win the Premier League or City still the <laughs> team to beat? You can never write City off. City still the team to beat? You can never write City off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break on our first sport now, because when we come back, we'll switch away from England and head to Italy. Well, like I said, the top five teams are separated by just one point. Stay tuned. <laughs> 